Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are very welcome here. A friend of mine asked me to make some pillowcases out of this Sherpa fleece, and I loved the fabric so much. I bought extra, and I have several projects in mind. Today, what we're going to do is make three variations of a fleece wreath. Let's go have some fun. So the base of our wreath is going to be a pool noodle, and I bought this pool noodle at the Dollar Tree. I was hoping to get a white one, but I went to a couple of Dollar Trees and they didn't have white, so I settled on this green one. It doesn't show through the fabric, so it doesn't really matter. Now you can just bend a pool noodle around and close it up with duct tape, but I feel like you don't get a nice circular shape that way. So what I'm going to do is heat the pool noodle with my heat gun and that will allow me to bend it so that it wants to stay in that circular shape. And I have out here a 14 inch wreath form and I'm just using that to make sure that I am actually making a circular shape. So I have my respirator, I have my gloves, I have my pool noodle and I have my heat gun and I'm just heating it up and bending it, heating it up and bending it. Now you can seal a pool noodle together with a heat gun. You can sort of melt it together, but I wasn't able to do that. I was too lazy to get some wire. I think if I had attached the ends together with wire, I would have been able to melt it together, but I wasn't able to do it just holding it. So I did end up duct taping it together, but it's already in a nice round shape. So it's not fighting the duct tape and trying to straighten itself out again. Now, I think this is the most economical way to get a beautiful fleece wreath, and that is by buying some Sherpa fleece from a fabric store. This is the Sherpa fleece in ivory from Joann's, and it's normally $17 a yard. On Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, it was $6.79 a yard. And you can always get at least a 40% off the regular price coupon for Joann's, and they often have their fabric on sale. So if you want to make something like this, my recommendation is to wait for a good sale on the fleece or to get a good coupon and wait till the fleece is full price and buy it that way. We're going to use eight inches, which is less than a quarter of a yard and you can buy fabric in a quarter yard length. So if, if you wanna get a quarter of a yard, it's going to be very inexpensive and you can cover your entire wreath with that. This is 60 inches wide and that's more than we're going to need to go around our 14 inch wreath. You figure with a 14 inch diameter, multiply that roughly by pi 3.14 and you're going to get less than 45 inches. Now we're going to be bending it, turning it, pulling it. So it isn't exact, but you're gonna need a lot less than the 60 inch length of the fleece. So I'm just cutting that. And you certainly could glue it to the pool noodle if you wanted to. I like to attach things mechanically when I can. I also like the idea that I can reuse things. Everything on the wreaths that I'm going to show you can be taken off and changed. So I'm going to use just straight pins and just carefully go around, pull the fabric tight around and pin it on the back side. And I just kept flipping it over and checking the front, making sure that there weren't any puckers, that the front was nice and smooth. And this is fairly stretchy, so that was actually quite easy. Once I got to the end, I just cut the fabric a little bit longer than it needed to be and folded it under and then pinned it down. This did give me a little seam right at the end. I ended up making that the top for most of these wreaths. And with that done, we now have a wonderful base and I'm going to show you three variations for winter wreaths that we can make with this base. For the first one, I found these wonderful snowflake tree toppers at the Dollar Tree. I thought they were really beautiful. They're metal and there's no glitter on them, so they're really very nice. So I'm going to use three of them on the wreath. And my challenge with these sort of metal pieces from the Dollar Tree is always removing the stake, or in this case, the spring on the back. And for me, the easiest way that I have found to do that is to slice at the glue that's adhering the stake, or in this case, spring, and then try to 
twist and turn the item. So don't try to just pull it directly off, but um, try to work against that glue by spinning it or, or twisting it. And some of these were easier for me to remove the spring than the others, but I was able to remove the springs without much damage to the snowflakes. I noticed that where the springs were attached, the snowflakes were already a little bit damaged. It already seems to have put a little bit of pressure on the snowflake, but I just worked to try to keep the snowflake flat while I removed those pieces. And then I just figured out how I wanted them to appear on the wreath. I thought I did not want them to be symmetrical, so I put two more to one side, one to the other side, and I also varied how much they were over the center of the wreath, so maybe one really centered over the wreath, but then maybe one more towards the inside, one more towards the outside, and I simply pinned them down again with my straight pins. White pins are best, but the yellow pins were pretty invisible as well, and these snowflakes have these you know, nice little holes in them that I could just push the pins through. And then I just took a wide silver ribbon, wrapped it around the top, and tied a bow at the top to hang it. And here's how it looks. I'm very pleased with this one. I do wish I had had more of a satin ribbon, but I didn't, so I used the ribbon that I had. Now our second wreath is a snowflake wreath, and you may have seen the snowflake tree that I made around the Christmas season, and a couple of people in the comments said that they wanted to make it but without the frame, and I thought that was a really cool idea, but it wouldn't stand up without the frame, and then I thought, well, it would look really nice on a wreath, so I thought we would recreate the snowflake tree, but this time instead of painting it white, I'm going to paint it brown. And this time I'm going to paint the snowflakes before I put them together because I wished that I had done that before. So I couldn't get the same exact snowflakes that I had before, and I'm not as fond of the snowflakes from the Dollar Tree this year as the ones that I used before, which I had left over from last year. But I did buy some similar pieces. I bought some of the pieces which are collections of, of four sort of attached together with elastic stuff. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what that's called, but it's a pretty good price for four wooden snowflakes. We're going to be doubling up, so that means that will get us two snowflakes in the final tree. And then I also got these really beautiful wooden snowflakes from Joanne Fabrics, and they were $1.99, but when I bought them, they were on sale for a dollar, and I think they went down even maybe to 75 cents before Christmas. So I bought four of those because, again, we're going to be doubling them up. And then I have some snowflakes which are paint your own ornaments from the Dollar Tree and eight come in a package. And I also bought these little wood shapes snowflakes, but I ended up not using them because they're a lot thicker than the other snowflakes. So I went back and got some of the stickers, which is the same thing I used for the snowflake tree in the tree video. And I used the stickers instead. And then it is just a matter of putting them together and figuring out you know, how you want to make a tree out of them. And that was actually pretty challenging for me. Um, some things that I wished I'd had more of, I didn't, so I couldn't use them where I wanted to. But eventually I got there and I came up with a tree shape. And so once I had that, I decided to paint them, as I said before, I assembled them. So step one to painting is just filling in all of the holes because many of these are meant to be hanging decorations. So just filling in the holes with some spackle and I just put a little bit of tape behind the holes. You don't even really need to do that. You can use your finger and hold it behind the hole while you fill it in and then you just wanna let that dry. It just takes a few minutes. Now to paint them, I wanted a little bit of a, a mahogany or a cherry wood color, so I used some burnt umber and I mixed into that just the tiniest bit of Tuscan red. And then I added quite a bit of water because I do want to be able to see a little bit of the grain of the wood such that it is through. I didn't want it to look painted, I wanted it to look stained. And because we're going to be gluing these together, you only need to paint or stain one side of the wood. Now the disadvantage to that is you might be able to see a little bit of the wrong side once you glue it together because these aren't perfectly exactly the same shape. So 
you could save yourself a little bit of touch-up trouble and paint both sides now, but you would be wasting a little bit of paint. Uh, it is watered down, so it doesn't. you wouldn't be wasting much paint. If I were going to do it again, I think I would paint both sides. Once that paint dried, I felt it was just a little bit too light and a little bit too red, so I took just a little bit of the burnt umber, mixed a lot of water in, and washed that over. And that brought it back to basically the way it looked when it was wet originally, when I first painted it. And I really liked the color that I got once I washed that burnt umber over the burnt umber mixed with the Tuscan red. Now to assemble this, I assembled it exactly the same way I did the tree that I made before. I put them together so that some of their little points would be touching, and then I cut tiny pieces of my 22 gauge florist's wire, and I glued it between the snowflakes using E6000. Once that had dried, I took my wood glue and covered the snowflakes with wood glue and then put the matching snowflakes on top of them. So the pieces of wire are sandwiched between the snowflakes. I then put a non-stick surface over them and then I put a heavy book on top to apply some pressure while the wood glue dried. Now I think when I did that that they may have shifted a tiny bit because I felt like they weren't as well lined up as they were before I put the book on. So once they had dried I did go back in and touch up those little corners that you can see and that, that's really the underside of the other side of the snowflakes because the edges of all of these snowflakes were brown. I really didn't need to paint the edges of them. So if I had painted both sides of the snowflakes originally, I wouldn't be doing any touch-up painting right now. Now, once the paint was all dry, I sealed both sides of the snowflakes with some matte Mod Podge. And the reason I sealed it, especially on the side that's going to be against the wreath, is because I didn't want any of that paint to stain my fleece wreath. So I made sure that I gave it a very good coat of Mod Podge, and I let the Mod Podge dry completely because, of course, I didn't want it sticking to the wreath either. So once the Mod Podge was all dry, I took a little bit of this silver florist's wire, which I bought at the Dollar Tree, and I just put that through the snowflake at the top, and I did two pieces of wire and wrapped it around the wreath and fastened it. If I had white wire, I would have used it. I don't have white wire, but I think the silver is pretty invisible. And here's what this one looks like. So for our final wreath, I wanted to do something a little different, and I thought I would try to do something a little southwestern. I purchased this faux leather trim at Joann's. It's a half inch, and that's going to be featured in an upcoming project, but I thought I would use it on this wreath as well. And what I decided to do was sort of put it across the wreath in a sort of a zigzag. I didn't want to wrap it around because I didn't like the way it looked. Um, on the back of the wreath. I really only wanted it on the front. And at first I tried to preserve the trim by not putting any pins through it, but I did end up having to put pins through it to get it to stay. So I just wrapped it from one side to the other and then back and then back and then pinned it around the back. This is two yards of the trim. And so what I wanted to do with this was to add some tassels to it because the fleece itself reminds me of a llama or an alpaca. And when we see pictures of alpaca in Peru, they are sometimes adorned with some tassels and pom-poms. 
Um, I'm not going to do the colorful colors that you often see in Peru. I'm going to do colors that I like. So I've already made some tassels and I'm going to show you my process for making one tassel and I will tell you the names of the colors of yarn that I have here. These yarns are all from the Dollar Tree. One of them is white and then the dark brown one is called pecan. The gray one is called smoke. The more tannish one is called taupe. And that greenish one, which is one of my absolute favorite colors of the Dollar Tree yarn, is called meadow. So what I did was I just wrapped the yarn around four fingers and my tassels are made from wrapping between 25 and 50 times around my hand. Like that green one's quite chunky. That one I wrapped around 50 times. Some of the thinner ones I wrapped around 25 times. I think the one I'm about to make is either 30 or 35 times that I wrapped it around my hand. So what you want to do before you start wrapping though is to cut one length, maybe 8 to 10 inches. That's what you're going to put through the top of the tassel. So cut your length, wrap, and then what you're going to do is slide that length in so that it loops through the top and then pull it tight and you can sort of smooth your tassel down at this point. And then what I was doing is wrapping a contrasting color around. So then take a nice long length of a contrasting color of yarn and tie that around. I did a square knot and then I just wrapped it around a whole bunch more times and then tied another square knot on the back and trimmed it. And then you're going to trim the loops at the bottom of your tassel. So I wanted my tassels to be hanging from the leather and I didn't want them to be symmetrical. Um, so I just sort of tried to come up with an organization of them that I thought was pleasing. Now for the bottom of the wreath, I have this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And it's nine feet of ribbon. I'm going to use the whole roll and I'm going to wrap it around the bottom of the wreath. Uh, when I wrapped it at first, I decided that I wanted it to be symmetrical at the bottom and I hadn't started it quite far enough over. And then what I'm going to do is take some succulents from the Dollar Tree and then just sort of stick them into the ribbon. And some of these succulents are clips, some of them are picks, and one of them came in a little pot, but you can just pull it right out of the pot and then it becomes a pick. So I'm putting them here sort of towards the middle, but I decided that I liked them better on the right side, sort of coming down. And that was all the succulents I had. This might look better if you had more succulents, I'm not sure. But here's what it looks like. So what did you think of our three fleece wreaths? Did you have a favorite? Please tell me in the comments. I'd also love to know if you would have done something different with any of the variations. I really liked the southwestern one, but I feel like it could have been done differently and I'm not sure exactly how. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells me that you enjoy this sort of content and I should bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.